one look, the heat is rising, and I've been cold for so long. Hey everyone, welcome back! I've been getting this question a lot lately, and I thought it'd be better and easier if I explained it in a video. This topic actually addresses two concerns, which I will highlight in a moment. I'm aware that the vast majority of the builds I create are shield gating builds. I'm also asked frequently why I choose to do so and why can't I make a health tanking version. For clarity, I'm referring to what some people call shield gating abuse, not the shield gate mechanic itself. I'm going to only mention this here once, but if you are shield gating, I'm assuming the decay dragon key is present. This item reduces shield max by 75% and makes it easier to restore all shields. Keep in mind this video is a meta discussion rather than teaching you how to shield gate. Also, it has been brought up in prime time at least twice now over the past few years. DE is aware of Decay Dragon Key usage. No, it is never getting patched. Their stance on it is that it is fine. This is most likely because it requires far more active gameplay to survive than a hell tanking build. Anyways, the first topic is a multi-part discussion from my end, so let's break it down. The first and primary reason why I play shield gating builds is because I'm used to it. This is the most intuitive and obvious answer because of the sheer amount of frames I play to try and create builds for. Some frames literally struggle to health tank, as I'm sure you're aware. For example, Banshee. For those frames, generally, people perceive the only option is to shield gate. On the other hand, I like to point out that this is incorrect. Every single frame in the game can health tank. Some are better at it than others, but if all you want is Inaro's gameplay, a frame without abilities, then every frame is able to pull this off. Every single frame in the game can both hell tank and shield gate, assuming the frame has shields, in relevant content. To me, relevant content is up to the level 200 mark. This brings me to my second and third points. The second point is that any frame can hell tank. This is a banshee. Banshee is known for being a glass cannon. This is a Banshee build such that you like Banshee, but you just want to have the frame in use, such as how most people don't play Inaros because of the intricacies of his kit, but because he is a sack of health. Yes, Inaros can actually do a few things with this kit. The problem is he takes too long to really do anything that matters, but that's an entirely separate discussion more suitable for a rework video. If all you want to do is play a sack of health Banshee, then it's easy. You put Vitality, Arcane Guardian, or Ultimatum in Adaptation. I put Rolling Guard. This mod is good for everything, not just Shield Gate builds. Its main purpose above all else is to get annoying status procs off you, such as Malice's Optic or that proc slashing can typically kill you off in just a few seconds if you get tagged by it, or a crappy magnetic proc that saps 200 energy if you just, say, want to cast Silence. Rolling prevents the drain from continuing. You get the point. Now you just need a way to heal. You either bring Life Strike from Heavy Melees, Healing Return from Status Melees, Gloom Helminth, Haruto with Innate Lifesteal, Arcane Grace, which by the way has fallen to lot in price over the last few months, and also considering Arcane Blessing. You could also bring a negative range Null Star build, stacking the 90% reduction cap of stars with Adaptation, Vitality, and Guardian or Ultimatum. All of these ideas are enough for Banshee to health tank steel path. Because Warframe is a game about movement. Gauss is loved for many reasons, but his entire identity is that I am speed. While you can stand in one spot and just eat damage in AFK on certain hell tank frames, it is not indicative of whether a frame can tank or not. Movement is fundamental to Warframe's core gameplay, and using any kind of parkour actively decreases enemy accuracy and grants you another layer of multiplicative damage reduction during the maneuver. Now that we established that any frame can health tank, let's get into the third point. Warframe players regarding survivability can be split into four categories. One, phase tanking builds where you rely entirely on weapons to DPS. This is Inaros, Revenant, and to a much lesser extent Rhino and Neja. These are frames with near insurmountable bulk that require you to AFK to get killed in base steel path. Their identity is tanking first and buffs and interactions after. Two, Hell tanking builds where you synergize the kit and actively cast abilities alongside your weapons to survive in DPS. This is Garuda, Nidus, Citrine. They have bulk and strong ways to heal but cannot tank the amount of burst damage the first groups of frames I listed can. 
but they have far more powerful ability interactions and synergy as well. These are the more balanced playstyle frames that ask for a little bit of everything from you. 3. Shield Gating Builds, where you do not care about the kit's synergy and you rely entirely on a weapon or a single ability to DPS. This includes very specific kind of setups, like Glass Cannon Saren with Zadas or Roar, Run and Gun Korra Whip Spam, Thermal Sunder Spam Titania, Terrify Mame Daquinox, you get the point. There are more intricate uses for these kinds of builds, but most people use them for the easily accessible max KPM or DPS. These shield gate builds have zero survivability beyond raw shield gating and revolve around kill or be killed. This third type of player is actually a very problematic topic I will get into after. And fourth, shield gating builds where the playstyle revolves heavily around kit synergy. You rely on a mixture of abilities and weapons to crowd control and DPS. The shield gate concept comes second to the kit synergy and is a solution to the survivability problem rather than the main highlight. This is important to distinguish because these kinds of builds typically lean heavily into uncommon or unintended ability interactions, have more complex rotations and just all around do not allow you to have a chill playstyle because they require active setup and mission and maintenance of core parts to upkeep the synergy from functioning. These kinds of builds are actually what most of my content are. You probably notice a lot of these builds are harder to run than the normal meta. That is intentional because this is the kind of gameplay I find fun and a byproduct is that you just don't have mod slots to hell tank properly. Regarding player types 3 and 4, people who complain about shield gating ruining the games are players who are trying to turn any hell tank frame setup into player type 3. They don't care about the kit synergy, they just see that shield gating lets any frame survive an insurmountable amount of damage. Therefore, if you can have some random useless fast cast ability to spam as needed, you can survive forever and you can keep nuking the map. This is literally molt spam Saren with Zatter or Roar. People complaining Korra's Whip Claw doesn't regenerate all shields on Korra Prime, or how Titania Thermal Sunder only works at non steel path fissures. Because that Titania cannot deal with armor scaling and thus gets killed. They want to turn more frames into this kind of Saren, Korra, Titania, except don't understand most frames cannot do this. The thing is, there is much more to shield gating than just spamming an ability that lets you survive forever. Health tanking requires a fair amount of mod slots, shield gating builds require less. A lot of people are upset that health tanking is less effective than shield gating despite shield gating requiring less mods. But there is an invisible part of shield gating difficulty and learning curve. Health tanking always works, passively, with zero effort. This makes it simple and intuitive to use, you mod right, you can survive a certain amount of incoming firepower. Shield gating is different. Shield gate builds source their shield regen from energy to shield conversion. This means frames with higher base shields are harder to reset gates on consistently. If you don't have enough energy to shield conversion from brief respite or auger mods, you cannot regenerate all your shields in a single cast, meaning you fail to reset the 1.3 seconds shield gate window and only get the 0.33 second window the next time your shields break. Yes, you can double cast, but this can also be risky for very, very obvious reasons. It's also expensive. If you need to turn energy into shields, then you cannot run high efficiency usually. High efficiency burns less energy, which means less shields. Health tank builds can run as high efficiency as they like. Also, if you run out of energy on a shield gate build, you die. That's why Titania Thermal Sunder cannot do Steel Path. You literally die because you cannot kill enemies properly and you run out of energy casting Thermal Sunder trying to DPS and shield gate. So on the surface, while shield gate builds appear to use less mod slots, they come with a big caveat that your energy bar is your life. If it goes empty, you die. If you put yourself in a situation where you're stuck spamming abilities to survive because of your bad decision making, your bar will be empty and you will die. Shield gate builds require balancing incoming versus outgoing energy and enough auger mods to meet that requirement. Certain frames are prohibitively hard to shield gate on, such as Gyre and Steinax, which is why brief respite and auger shield gate builds on those frames are uncommon or just unpopular frames to start with. You also have to be very aware of combat because bad decisions equals losing energy to survive equals higher chance of death. 
That is the invisible trade-off a shield gate builds. Certain frames obviously get away with shield gating spam easier, such as Hildren, Protea, Harrow, and Vault because they can generate shields easily, or any frame that has infinite energy, such as Citrine, Trinity, Garuda, Gauss, Necros, Korra, or tiny base shields such as Grendel. But that is a trait of the frame, rather than a trait of shield gating builds themselves. Why did I explain all of this? Because the main offending frames that fall under people's perception, your frame requires less mods to shield gate than my health tank and never dies, are typically from this list of frames. The real benefit of shield gating builds is not the infinite survivability. The real benefit is the original statement, your frame requires less mods to shield gate than my health tank build. This is important because shield gating builds open up more slots for build diversity. If you complain that all shield gate builds are the same, then you fall under player type 3, who only cares that shield gating makes you so-called invincible, albeit requiring much more active gameplay and are ignoring the fact that the extra mod slots give more build options. You might question what a single extra mod slot, or sometimes two, can allow. That's easy. I raise you this recent gyre build I made with cathode current. This particular build has 140 kpm and has been tested on stream numerous times as well as when I was gathering footage for this video. It took hours of testing on stream because Gyre basically does not have enough mod slots to make a proper nuke build. No matter what you do, she is always lacking something. Even this shield gate build is not perfect, and yet it reaches 140 kpm. Because a hell tank build requires more mod slots, what would you give up to do it? How would you match 140 kpm on a health tank build? You can't. That's the point. While you can use shield gate to survive forever with less mods than health tanking, the big draw is allowing you to make impossible builds that health tanking cannot make. There is also this Caliban build, a Warframe notorious for having ridiculous energy consumption to that you cannot really make a meta Caliban setup for Steel Path. Except Norscht fixed this, alongside using Sobek to surpass 100 kpm on this build. This allowed us to run high range, duration, and strength, and use the save slots to fix our energy economy. Because even with Nourish, Caliban still needed Equilibrium and Energize for this particular build to work. What would you drop on this setup to make a health tank version? Exactly, you can't. Finally, there was this recent Gloom without Gloom Equinox build I made for Night Form because I already had a Day Form build that makes use of Roar to buff Slash builds and Piercing Roar to stunlock enemies with Pacify's Slow. This build channels two abilities, Pacify and Mend. You also have to periodically cast Roar, which is an expensive ability. The only way I could offset this was building efficiency. Roar still burns so much energy at 160 efficiency that it is still possible to regenerate all 75 of Equinox's shields. This was mandatory because the build literally eats through your energy so fast even at 160 efficiency. Not only did I have to use Piercing Roar, but Peaceful Provocation is required to hit the 80% slow cap because you only reach 56% slow otherwise on this setup. This build was essentially a slightly weaker on slow gloom with significantly more offensive firepower since we brought Roar, which is a bane buff and double dips on slash builds. There wasn't even enough space to bring flow, hence why I had to suggest two energy max arc on shards. What would you drop on this build to health tank? Exactly. Again, you can't. This is the true power of shield gate builds. It opens up the doorway to make otherwise impossible setups and significantly expands potential to hit stack breakpoints that can make or break a build. The second topic is a very short one, but it should be very clear to you if you've been listening through the video up to this point. Otherwise, I would recommend actually watching and not skipping through. I've proven that shield gating is not only a survivability tool, but a build diversity tool. You might wonder, why is it okay that health tanking is restricted in build options then? It isn't. That's my main concern about build diversity in Warframe. Instead of focusing on why we don't like shield gating because it tanks better than health tanking, we should focus on how shield gating allows more build diversity than health tanking. Instead of dragging shield gating down because it requires active gameplay and nerfing it to match health tanking, we should be finding ways to open up health tanking to give it the build diversity that shield gating builds allow. It is time to talk about buffing health tanking, to give mod slots so that you can health tank better, or open up build diversity instead of nerfing shield gating. 
Remember, the entire argument of shield gating makes frames easily immortal for less slots hinges on the same playstyle that Naros uses, completely ignoring frame kits and just having an on-demand ability to shield gate reset. There is nothing wrong with people who choose to play that way, because all relevant content works with both hell tanking and shield gating as I showed earlier. The only time hell tanking falls behind is endurance runs, which coincidentally the straw man people who choose to complain about shield gating rely on. Instead, let's focus on the build diversity problem hell tanking has for scaling and options, for those that actually want to not just hell tank, but hell tank with kit synergy. What? would you suggest to improve health tanking? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible like I've done with Citrine's last wish in the upcoming Duveri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis as well as the earliest Duveri content. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.